my name is Katie Sainor, Certified Financial Planner and Licensed Tax Consultant. In this video, we're going to be doing a walkthrough for e-file.com. Let's get going. Let's get to our website. In your Google search, you'll type e-file.com. There are two companies. We are working with e-file.com. The logo looks like this. Let's get quickly through some pricing. It's in the middle of the front page. They have basic software package. Okay, we have our efile.com web page open. If you scroll to the bottom, you will see the pricing plans. Federal basic tax software is free for federal return. The state will cost you $22.49 with a code which gives you 25% off. Let's sign up for the account. You click start here. You will need to include your primary email address, a username. You'll need to confirm it and provide your cell phone number. Click Create My Account and you will receive a text message with a security code. Success, your account has been created. Click Continue. Now, Terms and Conditions. Put your name. If you're filing jointly with your spouse, both spouses have to give consent and sign documents for disclosure. We're doing a single example. Click Continue. Taxpayer personal information. It will be your name, social security number, date of birth, and occupation. Click Continue. What's your mailing address? So you will need to include your mailing address, apartment number, if you have one, zip code town select your state in our case it will be california you have to pick your own state residency status in our case uh, there will be a full year resident of the state also we have an option to click i have a stateside military address if you have one continue next we we'll arrive to the additional information you can skip that step if you want to but it's much better to answer if any of those apply to you. Please review all those questions. None of them apply in our example. We click continue. What is your filing status? If you cannot determine your filing status, you have a filing status wizard. In our example, we know we're single. We click single, continue, and move on. Dependents or qualifying persons. That will be your children or qualifying relatives that rely on your support and live in your household. We click No. IRS Identity Protection Pin. Majority of you are not going to have the Identity Protection Pin. If you want to read more information, click on the question mark here and you will see additional information here. We don't have one. Click Continue. Basic Information Summary. That's what we have so far. Click continue here. After reviewing our basic information, let's do this. Now we know more about you. Let's dig into your tax return. Wonderful. Click continue. You can add your forms quickly with quick file. You click on search like your W-2 and add the form. I don't know which one form I need. You can click on this one. You will be guided if you would like to, or you can select your forms. I want to select my forms. We know that we have our W-2. You will see this list of forms. It will tell you W-2 is the most common form here. From each of these items, like unemployment compensation, local income tax refunds, you can just simply jump to that worksheet screen. Let's start with our W-2. They will ask you about your employer EIN number. Now we can see our W-2. Here you go. This is our employee EIN number, box B on your W-2. Click Continue. How do you want to enter your W-2? We would like to enter your W-2 manually. Continue. Check 
any of these that may apply to you. So there will be, if this W-2 was corrected, it's substitute or railroad W-2. None of these in our example, we have to include your employer's name. Employer's name, the best company. Address, your employee address, zip code, city, state, it's California in our example. D, control number. Just disregard, it's not required for your taxes. Employee's name, so it's your name. We already have our first and last name pre-populated. The address, wages, box one, $56,000. We'll see that boxes one, three, and five are the same. In your situation, they could be all the same, all three different, two of them could be the same, the third one could be different. Please double check. Federal withholding, $6,200. Social Security wages, $56,000. Social Security tax withheld, $3,472. Medicare wages, $56,000. Medicare tax withheld, $112. Social Security tips, allocated tips, IRS verification code, dependent care benefits, and non-qualified plans and reported tips. In our example, we don't have that. You might have it. Next, let's work on box 12, code A. That is very important box to include all the information. You'll have many codes in here. Some of them single letters, double letters. We have D code, $1,500. We have one more code here, double D, it's $870. If you have any questions about those codes, you can open up those codes and it's like, okay, uh, D is elective deferral to section for 1K cash. And if we'll scroll down, you'll see double D is cost of employee sponsored healthcare coverage. You also can print those codes if you would like. Next. Box 13, that is for a statutory employee, retirement plan, and third-party sick pay. We have retirement plan. Box 14, that is for any additional codes that do not go on any other boxes. We'll have California SDI, and the amount will be $560. We don't have anything else. We don't have any Medicaid waiver payments. We scroll down to our box 15, which is state of California. Employer state ID number. Box 16 will be state wages. In our example, it's the same amount. You could have two different states in there or three. Every situation is different. $1,600 is our state income tax. We have empty boxes for numbers 18, 19, and 20. Depending on your residency, you might have information in there. Please check and you can always add another state down below. Continue. We got our W-2 wage statement. Click continue. If you see right here, we have our return summary going already. So we're getting refund of $1,106 so far. Any additional information here? We have 1099 INT from our bank account. You can like begin. Interest and dividend income. Did you earn any interest or dividend income from a bank, brokerage, firm, or some other institution? Yes, we got a statement from our bank. Begin. Interest income, 1099 INT. Payer's name. You don't have to include all this information. All you need to do is payer's name. Interest is in box one. We have $352. You can always add interest items below. We don't have any withholdings, federal withholdings. We have empty box, nothing for the state withholding. You can save and add another statement or just click continue. We'll see our interest going to our schedule B. Click continue. Did you earn any interest from a foreign bank? No. Did you earn any interest from Series E, E, and I U.S. saving bonds that you can exclude? No. Continue. Please look through the list of items here. If any of these items are applicable to you, you have to jump in there and begin completing the information. Click Continue. 
Let's see how we can cut your tax bill. How would you like to enter your deductions? I want to be guided. I select my own forms. If you know that you do not have any itemized deductions, you can simply skip this and use a standard deduction. In our example, we'll just skip because we don't have any deductions except for a standard deduction. Other taxes, you will see additional information regarding alternative minimum tax, self-employment tax. We just have our W-2 and 1099 from our bank. We click continue. Payments and estimates. That will be your federal estimated tax payments. If you paid out something throughout the year, you have to jump in there and complete the information. The same goes for the state estimated tax payments. Any other federal withholdings. Also, if you had underpayment of estimated tax, you have to complete that information. You're not required, but it's beneficial. Also, if you filed an extension, 4868, you will include your information in here. We didn't do any of those things, and we just click continue and jump to our miscellaneous forms. Miscellaneous forms will be really uncommon forms like installment agreement, injured spouse allocation. If you have any of those items that are really uncommon, for example, you doing a statement of person claim refund due to deceased taxpayer, you're better off using a tax specialist. It could get really complex. Also, if you have IRS identification pin, you can include it in here. None for us continue. Next, they will ask you about your Form 1095A for your health insurance if you have one. We have none. Continue. Now let's work on your state return. If you live in a state where you don't have to pay state income tax, you can simply click skip state return. In our example, we're using the state of California and state returns are $29.99 each. So if you have to file two different states, it will be double that amount. The information is transferred from your federal to your state return automatically. So completing your state return is pretty quick. Let's get started. It will ask you to choose your state return. That will be California, continue. Select your California return residency. You have to choose your return type. Resident, part year, non-resident. We're doing resident. County of principal residence. Did the taxpayer had full year minimum essential health coverage? Yes. Did your name change from a prior year tax return? No. Renter's credit. We do not qualify. We have too high of an income. You can go through all of the questions that apply directly in your situation. Congratulations, you have completed your standard California state return. If you would like to add any of the following items or any additional items not listed below to your California state return, you have three options here. We didn't work and live in any other state. We don't have registered domestic partnership and not filing as head of household. We move on. In the next page, you will see overall summary for your California return, similar to your federal return. That will be your basic information, additions to income, subtractions, itemized credits, additional taxes, contribution payments, healthcare shared responsibility. If you receive form 3853, you have to take care of that and miscellaneous forms. Miscellaneous will be your estimated tax payments. If you've paid anything with your extension, you can jump from here, click begin and complete that information. Top right corner, you will see your return summary. We're receiving a refund of $1,029 for the state. In our case, it's California, it's $10 refund. 
it's in green. If you'll have a tax liability, it will be in red. Exit California return. Right here, you will have an option to add another state return. If you move during the year or you work in two different states, you will probably have to add another state return. It depends on your situation. Continue. Tax return summary. You will see your total income, adjusted gross income, total tax, payments that comes from UW2, refund amount for the federal and California. Continue. Ready to file. If you're done with all your returns, that's it. Yes, I'm done with my return and ready to file. Next, you'll receive an offer of pay nothing out of pocket. So they will offer deduct your tax prep fees from your refund with file and go. Pay attention, this service will cost you additional amount on top of your state return of $29.99. We'll say no, thank you. They'll want to know how would you like to receive your refund, direct deposit or mail check. We'll do old fashioned way, mail check. State, same thing, mail check. Products and services. So they will show you your fees of $29.99. If you click continue, it will show your total, continue. On the next page, you will have to provide your ID, continue, and you will be able to e file your tax return. I'm going to go back to my account to see the dashboard. This concludes the walkthrough for e-file.com. That's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Happy tax season. Goodbye.